many people have uh, assumed that since there is a bidirectional association between diabetes and low testosterone, that one of them has to come first. But the simple answer is probably that in a definite clinical situation, one of them will come first, but it doesn't have to be the same one each time. So let me elaborate on that. Uh, we know that a third of men with type 2 diabetes have low testosterone. We also know that most of this association is because of the obesity component of the diabetes, or to be more specific actually now we think it is the insulin resistant component. So perhaps rather than saying that it's type 2 diabetes that is associated with low testosterone, it would be best to say that an insulin resistant state in a man is associated with low, low testosterone. Now coming back to the chicken and egg uh, situation, suppose you have uh, a person who is undergoing prostate cancer treatment for advanced prostate cancer and he has received a long acting GnRH agonist like Lupro. That makes someone hypogonadal very quickly. And this man does not have diabetes or obesity at baseline, but one year down the road, after having been made hypogonadal, he is going to have uh, obesity and perhaps diabetes. They definitely have visceral obesity. So here there is one situation where low testosterone induced fat mass gain and therefore progression to diabetes. On the other hand, suppose you have an obese boy entering puberty and completing his puberty. At this time he's supposed to have his peak testosterone concentration. The testosterone concentration of an obese boy is 40% less than that of a lean boy. So very early on you can say definitely that obesity has impacted his testosterone levels. So in these two different clinical situations you can see that one or the other came first and induced the next one.